Steve, the free throw discrepancy is, is quite large. I mean, how do you guys go about remedying that and also just trying to get to the line a little bit? Yeah, I thought we uh, we committed some some fouls that we didn't need to, um, especially in the first half. We had, I think, three where, um, you know, on a jump shot, I think um, I think we hit Davis on a fadeaway 17-footer. I think we fouled a couple times when they were in the bonus when we didn't need to. Um, they're going to shoot more free throws than we are. I mean, I think they were number one in the league, and we were last or next to last. So not a surprise, but that is a huge disparity, and uh, we need to bring that down. You, uh, you referenced the run you made late. It was after you went small. Um, what triggered that decision to finally, you know, go to that small lineup and, you know, what did you like from it? Well, we were, you know, we needed to score. We were down 10. I mean, you know, a lot of times we make the decision, uh, the lineup decision based on time and score. And uh, time and score dictated, you know, that we needed to, the spacing. And uh, so we went with that, that smaller lineup and uh, they made a great Great push, and uh, you know we got some some big plays from a lot of guys. Wiggs is rebounding down the stretch, um, you know, and, and obviously the the, sh- the the shootings. I mean, Steph hit a couple of incredible threes, and um, Jordan and Clay some big ones. So um, you know we were right there. We gave it gave it a um, a great fight, and um, just couldn't get over the hump. But uh, we'll be we'll be ready for game two. Were you okay with that twenty eight footer that Jordan took? Was Steph obviously getting double teamed? Uh, was that an okay shot? And what did you think of Jordan's game overall tonight? Yeah, I thought Jordan did a really good job. Um, <clears throat> I had the timeouts left, but I saw them double teaming Steph at uh, at half court. So I knew somebody was going to be wide open if we could just get the ball uh, out. And Steph did a great job. He got the ball uh, out of the trap, and um, Jordan was wide open. And... and uh, Pretty good look, and um, you know that's that's a shot he can hit. So really, um, you know, happy with that possession. And uh, and again, this you know Jordan had hit six threes already, so um, it's a great shot for us. Hey Steve, exactly half of your team's shots tonight were three point attempts, and, and threes are a big part of your identity. But even if you wanted to change that approach, is it tougher because of their interior defense? Because of their, their interior defense. Yeah, I mean, uh, with Davis in the paint, you're not going to get um, you know anything easy at the rim. So um, you, you still have to try to attack. You know, you can't just uh, play around the three point line the whole game. Uh, but a big part of our offense is um, you know drive and kick get the ball into the paint, move it out, and our guys did a pretty good job of that. Um, you know, they, they were trying to take away our threes um, the whole game, the, the top locking and, and um, really putting pressure on our perimeter guys. And, and um, I thought our guys did a really good job of uh, finding openings and getting each other um, some, some good shots. Steve, defensively, the, these guys are so much different from Sacramento. Uh, the 54 paint points tonight, like, do you feel like you could have leaned more even into daring them to beat you from the outside? Well, I, again, I think, um, you know, when you, when, you, when you start the series, um, you really have to, to go through a game to really feel it and then watch the tape and figure out, um, you know, what possible adjustments. Um, Davis, it felt like Davis made a lot of mid-range shots. Um, I, I, I'm not sure how many, but, um, you know, those are shots that um, we have to be willing to give up, um, you know, because if we can keep, the, keep them from the rim um, and, and they're taking uh, some, ch- some challenged uh, two-point shots, um, I think those are shots you got to live with. But again, I, I feel like we have to, to really look at the tape and, and see where we can get better and um, how we might be able to counter some of the things they did. You gave Steph a little extra longer rest, at least from the way you've been doing it in the third quarter. Was that just you weren't going to play him 40, 42, 43 just to start this series? Yeah, yeah. I've, um, and I think uh, we were hanging in there. Um, you know, I think he needed a little bit of rest at that time, and then I felt like I was probably going to play him the whole fourth. And uh, so it just felt like, like the right decision at the time. You, you played to Michael Green, extended the rotation a little. What did you like from him? What were you? What did you want to get from him, and, and what did he give you? 
Uh, it, you know, we're playing a, a big, strong team, and Jamichael gives us, uh, you know, some size on the front line, some uh, some rebounding, and he can hit the three. You know, he knocked down a couple threes for us, which um, is one way to loosen up their defense a little bit. Uh, so I liked Jamichael's minutes. Um, you know, he did a nice job out there, and uh, you know, we've. Uh, I, I felt like coming in, we we needed um, another um, big in this series. You know, that we weren't just going to play uh, Draymond and Loon um, solely. I thought we needed another guy, and J. Mike filled that role well. You know, game one's obviously styles change so much from team to team. Just, um, I mean, I know you know the length that the Lakers possess. Just how different is it going from who you just played to, to what they have inside? Yeah, it's a totally different team. Um, you know, they present some different challenges than we faced the first round. You just got to make the adjustment, come back in game two better. Did you think the quick turnaround had any effect on you guys uh, nah. at the beginning end of the end of this game? Nah, <clears throat> uh, thought we was pretty good. Uh, we got out in transition early. We fouled too much, and that you know that slowed us down quite a bit. So we got to be better defensively, and that start with me. How, how do you handle, or not just you specifically, but the team handle a player like Anthony Davis with that amount of length and? Uh, I think when you're guarding a player like AD, um, you know, it's never going to be one guy that just shuts him down. It's a team effort. Um, <clears throat> but, you know, as far as the matchup goes, you know, you got to take that head on. And, you know, I don't think we did a great job of that tonight. And like I said, that starts with me. You mentioned the foul discrepancy, and obviously they got to the line nearly like five times more than you guys. I mean, how do you combat that going forward? Is, is that is it as simple as just the message being, don't foul? Uh, yeah, I mean, I think there was some, you know, some cheap ones that we kind of gave away, some in transition we took, uh, you know, some away from the ball when they were in the penalty, uh, you know, that we can take away, and, you know, we'll be better with that. You mentioned how the uh, obviously a very different team you're playing now than you played in the last round. But in terms of the bigs, how different is that? I mean, that's a dramatic change going from Thomas to to AD. I mean, what is AD? What are the challenges he brings specifically? Uh, he's a great player, um, very athletic, great rim protector, uh, and you know his shot was going tonight. You know he felt like he he made every one of those mid ranges he took, and you know um, you got to live with some of those. But I think you know we can do a better job individually and collectively uh, to take some of those away. Obviously, Jordan didn't have a great last series, but what did you think about him in this game and the shots he was taking and the willingness to take them? I thought he was really good. Uh, I thought early on he passed up a couple, and you know we needed him to take those, and then he started taking them, and he was great. And um, you know I think this will be a series that will go his way, and you know that's great for us because we'll need him. Uh, you talk about um, things have to change with you, and typically you're the floor general. So what do you change for, for the next game? Uh, my aggressiveness I, on both ends of the floor. I think um, you know, I allowed the three fouls to kind of take me out of a rhythm and never really found it again. You know, So just got to stay out of foul trouble. Um, it's kind of been a thing with me lately. and Just got to stop fouling and defend better. Um, it's a feel-out game, obviously. Game one, of course, you want to win it, but guys make adjustments from here. In that fourth quarter, you guys went on a run. Steve kind of went small. Do you think that's something that you guys can use to your advantage? <clears throat> I mean, I think that's always been an advantage for us, but we're not just taking Kevon Looney out of the lineup. Uh, he's been incredible, so that's not on him. If anything, it was on me. So, uh, yeah, I mean, that's something that we always have, and I'm sure we'll see some of that, but... Um, you know, there's a lot of other things that we can do better, and you know, we'll watch the tape, figure them out, and we'll be better. You mentioned you feel like this is a series that tilts Jordan's way. Is that just because an obvious need for more spacing out there against them? Yeah, spacing, but I also think um, the way they guard. Uh, you know, he's going to get some good looks, and you know, it's on me and Lewin and Jamichael, uh, you know, guys to get him free and allow him to get some daylight and get to some of the shots that he want to get to. But, uh, you know, like I said, I think this will be a much better series for him and uh, one that will turn his way, and, you know, hopefully that will turn it our way. 
Draymond, just following up on Monty's question there. You're in the back, sorry. <laughs> uh, following up on Monty's question there, do you feel like you can employ a similar strategy in guarding AD that you did with Domas, or is that? Oh, no. No. Totally different player. Um, no way. Uh, we, like I said, we have to be better at the point of attack with him. Um, you know, shore up our ball screen offense. He got a lot of ball screens um, and drop offs. I mean, ball screen defense. I'm sorry. Uh, he got a lot out of ball screens and drop offs, and you know, we're, <clears throat> you go from guard and pick and roll totally different last series, quick turnaround, and you got to readjust to that, you know. And so we'll make the adjustments and we'll figure it out. But um, like I said, it starts with our aggression. Um, you know, when you allow him to get a couple easy ones to start, then he's feeling good, and he's a hell of a player, as we all know. So. Starts with our aggression initially, and um, you know, and then you go from there. Yeah, Draymond, I asked this of Steve before the game. You know, your last four games, now the road team has won. A lot of road teams are winning the playoffs. Is home court advantage in the playoffs maybe overrated? I think everybody want to be at home. Uh, I don't think it's you're necessarily overrated. Uh, at some point, you know, some road teams are going to get some games, and you know, we'll have to make sure we do that and return that favor. Um, but no, if you can get home court, you always want it. Uh, home court uh, just to be in front of your crowd, um, you know, in hopes that, you know, you, everyone plays better at home, you know. So, uh, you know, you establish more of your routine, your daily routine, which makes a difference. So I think, um, you know, we all want home court. And, you know, we'll have to, number one, protect home court next game. Uh, but also, you know, come come this weekend, go, go down there and get, get one back. Clay, what kind of kind of mental and emotional adjustment was it to go from that King series, really different opponent, pretty quickly to turn around and play the Lakers? Yeah. Uh, what, what was that like to go through? Well, it was a quick turnaround, but can't uh, dwell on it because we got a really good team over there, and they do things differently than the Kings, but present um, some big challenges, and saw that tonight, so... Um, the morale is not low. We know uh, we let one slip away, but we we got an opportunity to watch the film tomorrow and see uh, how we can attack them better. Clay Steve was saying before the game that obviously the interior defense of L.A. is much different from that of the Kings. How much of that is Anthony Davis and how much of that is just the guys that surround him in the paint area? I mean, a lot of it's Anthony Davis. Uh, I think he was averaging four blocks a game during these playoffs, so... It's our job to hunt great shots, and I thought we got some really good looks tonight, uh, especially for myself. Uh, didn't go in the way I wanted them to, especially in that second half, but um, like I said before, it's one game, and we got another opportunity to even it out on Thursday. Clay, what do you do to control the foul trouble that you guys had for game two? Um, just continue to just make a mental note and be mindful that this team uh, thrives at going to the free throw line and I think they would rather play a slower pace than getting up and down with us so we have to be more mindful come game two about playing with our hands back and living with the shots they take rather than trying to be aggressive and uh, swipe it everything. What did you think about Jordan in this game, Clay, after after last series? Oh, he played great. I mean, he kept us in it. He uh, gave us a huge spark off the bench. He played fantastic. And, uh, you know, I know he's always going to bounce back, and he played just wonderful. What do you think got your, you know, you, you were down 12, whatever it was, and then come back to tie it. What, what, you went small. What, what do you think was the kind of the direction that you were able to get? Let me phrase that correctly. How were you able to do that? Um, just uh, being gritty on defense. Uh, Steph made some incredible shots. Uh, so did Jordan. Um, but that was a... Incredible, incredible effort on our part. Uh, we still um, have another level to reach for myself individually. I know I do, so there's no time to dwell on um, the unfortunate events tonight because uh, we play every other day at this point.
your two big lineup with Looney and Draymond, I mean, obviously the numbers over the course of the season and really history remain good, but I know, especially against this team, they really sag off both. What is the key to when they are both on the floor, like still, you know, having the spacing that gets you guys the points you need? I mean, I love the looks I got the first half. I think I, even the second half, uh, maybe rushed a few shots, but uh, for us, when the, we're big out there, it's just about being a little more patient and using those guys as screeners, and they're great at diving and playing out the pick and roll for the screens, uh, not in the ball screen action. So for us, um, I mean, it's, it's hard for me even to expand on that because uh, I got to watch the film. And we watch the film tomorrow, we'll uh, have a better, much better game plan come Thursday. Obviously, during the playoffs, every player takes their game up another notch, but Kavon Looney and what he's been doing the playoffs so far and having 23 rebounds tonight. I mean, what do you think about the way that he was just aggressive? Kavon has been an anchor for us, and he's just such a steady presence. I mean, we would not be in the position we are right now without him, so I'm grateful for Loon's effort and his uh, commitment to the game. He uh, is a warrior, true definition of a warrior, just for the, his style of play and his... Uh, tenacity, you know, especially on the boards. You've had some pretty good success with driving and kicking the last few games. And tonight, I'm thinking the one play in particular where you drove and you had the behind the back pass, I think it was to GP, I think. Um, can you attack AD or anybody in the paint when you have sort of like someone that's an outlet for you there? Yeah, absolutely. And uh, I probably could make more plays come game two, but um, this was a completely different look than the Kings, so we uh, got to definitely trust our ball movement a little more. I think, um, I mean, 30 assists is good, but we can do even better. And uh, I just know we'll be better Thursday. Like, we, we always respond when we have a tough night out. That it? Nice. Thank you, Steph. We'll be we always call game ones kind of a feeling out situation. Is that too easy to write this off as that, or uh, did you feel like some things you were trying, you saw some things that they're going to carry through this series? I feel like uh, there's obviously a drastic difference between you know our last series and style of play with how the Lakers. Um, come at you on both ends of the floor, their personnel. Obviously, AD had a big game, but you know, for the most part, there's that little run in the third quarter where they got some momentum and took it to a, was a 14 point lead at one point. But um, we obviously clawed our way back, tied it with minutes and change left, <clears throat> um, gave ourselves an opportunity. We know we need to clean up some stuff. A little too many turnovers on my part. Uh, understanding AD's presence in the paint, he's, you know, he has length and the way that they're they're trying to funnel us into, you know, the, the lane. Uh, Got to be able to see the floor a little bit better. But you know, long series. Uh, they say it's first to four, and I think we found some life down the stretch that hopefully we can capitalize off of in game two. There's always kind of this big against small debate for you guys internally um, and that'll I'm sure pop up in this matchup, particularly because, you know, the run you mentioned late was when you went small. Just how do you view those two different options in this series, staying too big or going small? And then even when you are too big, how do you score more efficiently? You just got to, I mean, that's obviously coach making calls and decisions on how the game is going and flowing. If we can rebound, you know, going small is okay. to our advantage. Uh, okay. uh, there was probably three, four possessions where you could see we got to stop, we got to rebound, we got to push. Somebody was open, and uh, <clears throat> that's that's kind of how we like to play. If it's traditional and you know the way that they're playing us, we just got to be a little bit more organized in terms of our overall spacing. And like I said, <clears throat> respect. Uh, how they're trying to guard us and where they're trying to push us on the floor. <clears throat> Excuse me. And uh, just make the right reads. I got my shot block, I think, 
three or four times trying to get little floaters off because you get one step too too deep. Um, and that's just an adjustment that you got to make. And, uh, you know, we'll, we'll be a lot better, a lot more organized on that front in game two. Steph, um, this is the 23rd time you and LeBron have faced each other in the postseason, or LeBron has faced – you know, you're the core of your team. He just said it, it, it feels historic. I'm just wondering, how was it for you to play him? Obviously, this is the first time you played him at Chase, um, different team, but just how, how was the experience of seeing him again in the postseason? You, you, you have to reflect on, like, everything that, you know, we've, we've all gone through since the 15 finals. Um, and just appreciate the opportunity to have another, you know, chapter in in that battle and that competition. Obviously, once the ball, you know, drops, it, it's a different feel, uh, just based on how the Lakers play versus the old Cavs teams, and uh, even just the different style that he's playing a little bit. He's, you know, uh, trying to come at you a little differently, space you out a little bit. He's shooting a lot more threes and stuff like that. It's just a little different vibe, but. There is a reflection of just how you know awesome and special this this battle is, um, and the fact that we get to do it again. You know, we, we want to come out on top, and we're going. It's going to be a, a fun series all the way around. But uh, there is a moment of reflection for sure. Just how cool this is. Uh, you know, all these years later. Quick follow up to that one before I ask you another one. But when, what was going on when he was walking with you to the sideline when you're coming out of the game? Was that just a conversation, or was he trying to sneak into the, onto your bench or something? Oh, he walked, uh, he walked all the way down the court with you. Nah, he was just joking around about having to guard me all the way till I got to the bench. <laughs> and also, what, what did you think about Jordan taking that shot? Uh, you were getting doubled. It was early. You did have a timeout. Uh, you, you fine with that shot? For sure, I know he he made six of them tonight, uh, and we talked about a little bit of, <clears throat> about certain adjustments we need to make throughout the course of the game to keep creating good looks. But uh, it was decisive. It was you know a, a shot he was open and and flowing. Considering how they guard us on that possession, you know, trapping me at the half court, Draymond swinging it over to him. It's kind of in rhythm shot, uh, but uh, you know I'm sure he, he he felt pretty good about it. That's why he shot it. There's no kind of you know regrets on that. It's just you know make or miss type situation. Uh, a lot of trust in him and his ability to put the ball in the basket. Uh, Steph, so Lakers are tattering a lot. They got 25 free throws. So how would you guys to make an adjustment to control the foul trouble? Um, you know, AD is going to put pressure on you all game, so you like to not let him get eight off, but that might not kill you. It's it's more the the other guys, especially the ball handlers. You know, Schroeder gets ten free throws, like that can't happen. You know, whether we think it's a foul or not, we can't put ourselves in that situation. That's how he makes an impact because he is super, you know, quick and you know his first step, and we have a certain strategy around him. But you can't let him get to the line, you know, ten times. Um, that's a that's a that's a killer. So we'll make those adjustments. Understand again, quick turnaround from Game Seven and against Sac, and and locking in on what they the Lakers do well, and uh, confidence is how that we can we can bounce back. Steph, you mentioned uh, AD's length in your first answer. Is that hard to gauge until you play him uh, once or twice in this setting? He was jumping out on the pick and rolls. He was contesting a lot of things, even outside of the paint. Does it take you a game or two with someone like him because he's long and quick? For sure. Uh, and it's also because of how they're playing us. They know they want to take away our threes, even though we got 50 of them up. Like, they... They want to try to put pressure on the perimeter, funnel everything into the paint and allow him to disrupt a lot. And close the space pretty quick. It's kind of deceiving. You feel like you have a good look to get it over the top and gets a fingertip on it. So, um, 
you got to respect it. Like, that's that's how he makes an impact on that end of the floor. And you can't be stubborn thinking you can just keep going in there. And you still got to be, you know, be able to drive, put you know, pressure on the rim, but you can do it in a creative way. So, yes, you got to feel it because uh, it is it's impactful. With AD in the middle like he is and being a deterrent, really, also blocking some shots, obviously, um, does that offer – Maybe with spacing a little more, a few more drive and kick opportunities. You know, in other words, attack and then you know sort of get him and then. Yeah, you just depending on who's out there and uh, there's probably you know whether it's Draymond and and, and Loon or uh, Jermichael out there. He got some clean looks. You have to trust that somebody's going to be open. And whoever it is, you know, have confidence to knock the, knock down a shot or get to the next action. But can't have two guys on top of each other where you know one guy can guard two, and your spacing gets kind of killed and the ball stops. Uh, that's what they want. And I think a little bit in the third quarter, that's what kind of happened to us. And we figured it out a little bit in the fourth and kept putting pressure on us. How we got back in the game, but you guys do that from the jump. Uh, in game two to give ourselves much more flow on offense. Hey, Steph, I talked to uh, George Kittle after the game, asked him about that Looney jersey he had on. He says, yeah, Looney is a bona fide tight end. <laughs> so my real question to you is, what are we going to need from you, Looney the rest of the way and kind of talk about his performance tonight and what he's done to help you get to where you are now? More of the same with Looney. He's, he's unbelievable. Uh, 20-plus rebounds again, killing it on the offensive glass. Uh, just giving us extra possessions and, you know, that physicality in the paint. So just more of the same. I, I love, you know, the way that he's playing and the way that he's impacting the game. And obviously he understands he has a tough matchup with AD, and AD's going to get his points. He's an unbelievable offensive talent, but just making it tough on him. And uh, we got to help him, you know, try to secure some more of those rebounds and and uh you know give him some support down there but he's doing an amazing job so I'm not up here to give Loon any more advice. He's he's doing it perfect. Great. Gotcha. Thank you. Appreciate it. Yeah.